I'm here to share a story about a lake and a prairie and an array of solar panels. At first glance, this might seem like an unlikely trio of characters to encounter together in a single story. I hope to weave these three dissimilar threads into a common story that sets the stage for us today. We'll start with the lake. The glacial lake that we know today as Lost Lake gets its name from the oral tradition of the Ho-Chunk people, which explains how this local watershed came to be. When the creator was engaged in making the lands and waters of Dejok, they created the four larger lakes in the Yahara watershed, known today as Mendota, Monona, Wabisa, and Kagansa. In doing so, the creator misplaced one small, one small fifth lake. It was lost. <laughs> and it was later found right here on the northwest shore of Lake Mendota, hence the name Lost Lake, or in the Ho-Chunk, Deoha Wani. This tale of how a lake was lost, temporarily lost, and then found would go on to have an uncanny echo centuries later. To understand that echo, we need to set the scene of our local watershed. Lost Lake is situated within the wa Yahara watershed, but rather than connecting directly to the Four Lake chain, it sits within a small sub-watershed nested within the greater Yahara watershed. Approximately 100 acres of land drain directly to Lost Lake, which has no outlet. We know from historical records that the original size of Lost Lake was approximately eight acres in area and 10 to 15 feet deep. When the sisters first arrived here in 1953, agriculture was the predominant land use. Decades of cultivation had taken its toil on the surrounding topsoil, the topsoil of the surrounding fields, which were vulnerable to erosion. Aerial photos clearly depict how, as sediment from those hundred acres made its way into Lost Lake, the size of the lake steadily began to shrink. By the mid-1990s, the amount of open water had dwindled to just one acre in size, with an approximate depth of 18 inches. Lost Lake was in danger of being lost a second time. Fortunately, the sisters at Holy Wisdom, Wisdom had the vision and courage to intervene, answering their calling to care for the earth and guided always by their Benedictine values, the sisters worked alongside many community partners to restore Lost Lake to its original size and depth. 85,000 cubic yards of sediment were excavated, banks were recontoured, and a forebay was created on the west side of the lake to intercept future sediment and runoff. The restoration of Lost Lake was a remarkable achievement, which required considerable investment of resources. Even more remarkable is the way that the sisters and their community used this project as a catalyst for an ever more impactful vision of caring for the land. So this is where we meet the second character in our story, which is Prairie. There were plenty of questions about how to best protect the newly restored lake from sedimentation to avoid any future need to redredge the lake. And the answer that emerged for the sisters was Prairie. Most prairie plants are deep-rooted and long-lived perennials. They are naturally gifted at holding soil in place, building soil health, and allowing water to soak into the ground rather than transporting sediment across the land. This year, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the restoration of Lost Lake and the 25th anniversary of planting the first prairie at Holy Wisdom. The Lake Restoration Project launched a new chapter of land stewardship at Holy Wisdom Monastery by catalyzing more than a decade of planting prairies. Slowly, steadily, the footprint of restored prairie grew at Holy Wisdom. The sisters and their community harvested seeds, sowed seeds, and stewarded young prairie plantings. By 2015, more than 130 acres of prairie had been created, with the positive impacts rippling far beyond the shores of Lost Lake. And here's where we introduce the third and final character in this story, which is, of course, the solar panels. Dredging Lost Lake produced 85,000 cubic yards of sediment. 
The sediment was relocated to a nearby field just southwest of the retreat and guest house. Newly keen on the many benefits of prairie, the sisters tried to establish a native prairie on the dredged soils. But unlike all the other new prairie plantings, this one never thrived. Despite our best care and efforts, many of the species planted in the seed mix never appeared, and the ones that did establish eventually dwindled, facing stiff competition from the many weeds that thrived in that altered soil. It turns out that that poor soil, displaced from the neighboring fields, then trapped at the bottom of the lake, and then ultimately dredged out and spread out in a new place, didn't much want to become prairie. <laughs> For years, we heard this message without truly hearing the possibilities that it presented. No, we didn't try again to plant prairie in that same place. We periodically mowed the area to keep the weed seeds out of the happier, healthier prairie units and focused our care for the earth efforts on other parts of the land. Meanwhile, another expression of the sisters' commitment to caring for the earth was gaining steam as they steadily worked towards a long-term goal of becoming a, of a carbon-free energy future. In 2009, they completed construction of this new monastery building, an exemplary model of energy efficient design and sustainable building practices. In 2014, they added more than 400 rooftop solar panels. In doing so, Holy Wisdom became MG&E's largest solar customer and was generating approximately 60% of our total energy needs directly from those solar panels. Just recently, the need to replace a failing gas boiler in the retreat and guest house prompted the monastery to take the final steps towards net zero. Working with experts to install additional solar panels, additional geothermal wells, and a battery energy storage system, Holy Wisdom Monastery will be generating 100% of our energy needs on site from renewable sources by the end of this year. With the rooftops of our buildings already covered with panels, discussions began about where we might locate 300 kilowatts of new solar panels. The dredge field close to the retreat and guest house was a clear and wonderful choice. Installing the ground mounted panels here on the spoils of the Lost Lake restoration didn't disturb any high quality prairie communities. It was also located close to key electrical infrastructure, which helped keep project costs down. And by choosing this location for the panels, we are rewriting a narrative of a weedy and failed prairie to one of a climate-friendly future. This is a story of a lake that was lost and then found, and the prairie that protects it. It is a story of displaced soil that refused to grow prairie and lay patiently waiting until we realized that perhaps its true gift was to grow solar power. And this is also a story that involves each of you. Let the first annual Spring Tilt begin. Thank you.